Welcome back to Differential Calculus. I'm your tutor Ryan, and this is part eight in the series of basic derivatives. We are covering the derivation of the trigonometric series of functions. Uh, the last video we did, we covered the derivation of sine into cosine, and in this video we'll be covering questions two and onward, whatever we can fit into this video. All right, let's get started on question number two. Ignoring the random meowings of my cat, Question number two asks us to find the location of any horizontal tangents of y equals secant x divided by one plus cosine x. All right, well, in order to do this, we need to realize that a horizontal tangent refers to the slope. So, of course, as per the point of all these videos, we must find the derivative of question number two. So we will get started on that by using the quotient rule, as we have learned in previous videos. At the bottom of the screen, you can see I've already given you the derivatives of what we're going to need to get started with this question. This is a good habit to get into when trying to do derivation and calculus. After using the quotient rule, we end up with y prime is equal to secant x multiplied by 10x plus 10x cos x plus sine x, all in square brackets, all divided by the denominator squared. And of course, a good thing to note is that horizontal tangents will occur only where y prime is equal to zero. And since secant of x cannot equal zero, it must be the stuff in the square brackets. Since if it was what was on the bottom, the denominator, we would get a vertical tangent. We don't want a vertical tangent. We want a horizontal tangent. So let's try to figure out which ways we can get what's in the square brackets to equal zero. Well, if we remember our charts of tan x and sine x, we'll know that at the location of x equals zero, tan x and sine x are zero. And even though cos of x is not, it's multiplied by tan of x, therefore multiplied by zero. So at the location x equals zero, we have a quick check that this function is zero at this location. However, that is not the only location. So let's check some others. If we check the location of x equals n pi, where n is an integer, we also get the function above to be equal to zero. Furthermore, if we check the locations x equals 2n plus 1 multiplied by 2 thirds pi, where n is an integer, and we also check the location x equals 2n plus 1 multiplied by 4 thirds pi, where n is an integer, we also get that function above to come out to be zero. We will show a graphical image of why this is true and how I came to discover it via looking at this graph of this function that I have plotted out. Here we are seeing a graphical representation of the equation tan x plus tan x cos x plus sine x and where it equals zero. Just going to zoom out a little bit to get you a better view of where it crosses the x axis and where that zero location occurs and how those aforementioned equations I've given you for inserting values of n where n is an integer will get you the result of x being equal to zero throughout that equation. Furthermore, for your view viewing pleasure, you can see here the equation secant x. It never crosses the x-axis as itself, as its original equation. Therefore, it could not have been included in the overall equation equaling zero, so it had to be subbed out. That's why we took what was in the square brackets. All right. Let's move on to question number three. Question number three asks us to find the second derivative of the equation h of t equal to t to the power four multiplied by sine t multiplied by cos of t. So we're gonna need the product rule in order to do this and the product rule is stated here if you did not recall it. So let's go on and figure out the results of the derivatives that we're going to need throughout and then when we get to the end we're going to put them all together and see what the result is and simplify if necessary. Alright so I've made f of t equal to the t to the power 4 portion and g of t equal to the sine t cos t portion of the above equation. Basically that just means that we're going to need to do the product rule within the product rule which is really not that big of a deal. So we find that f prime of t is equal to 4t cubed and g prime of t is equal to cos of t cos of t plus sine of t multiplied by negative sine of t which simplifies out to cos squared of t minus sine squared of t. So at this point we have pretty much everything we need and we're ready to finish this off. h prime of t ends up being 
4t cubed multiplied by the normal of the second plus the normal of the first multiplied by cos squared t minus sine squared t. And now, at this point, there's a little bit of simplification that can be done, so let's investigate this simplification. Using some of the trigonometric identities I've listed before, we can take the sine of t, cos of t portion, and reduce it to sine of 2x divided by 2, and we can use the cos squared of t minus sine squared of t and reduce it to 1 minus 2 sine squared of t. So the end result of this is h prime of t is equal to 2t cubed sine 2t plus t to the power 4 multiplied by 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Now that happens to be the first derivative of h. We need to find the second derivative of h. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly following the same procedures as we've done before and utilizing the product rule. And we will eventually get to the final result, which is first step 6t squared sine 2t plus 2t cubed 2 cos 2t plus 4t cubed multiplied by 1 minus 2 sine squared t plus t to the power 4 multiplied by negative 4 sine t cos t. Simplifying this we get the simplified result of the second derivative and that is h double prime t is equal to 6t squared sine of 2t plus 4t cubed cos of 2t plus 4t cubed minus 8t cubed sine squared t minus 4t to the power of 4 sine of t. Uh, if you can do that all on your own without really too much help then you're well on your way of utilizing the product rule properly and understanding the derivation of trigonometrics. But we're not done, we will continue the rest of the questions in a later video. Don't forget to rate, comment, favorite, and or subscribe and thank you for watching. This has been the Calculus Tutor.